Meetup Live office hours for the Meetup for Organizers app. I am your host, Alex. I'm a lead on our customer support team. I am joined today by Colin, another lead on our customer support team. Um, as always, we like to give everybody a heads up about what to expect from our event today. Um, so first and foremost, we'll go over some event guidelines. Uh, first and foremost, this event will be recorded and you do not appear in the video. Um, even if you have your cameras on, it doesn't register in the video, so you're all set. Uh, similarly, your audio has been courtesy muted during the event, so you will only be seeing or hearing uh, Colin or myself. But if you do have questions, we love that. Uh, we have a Q&A button uh, on the Zoom panel. Feel free to submit any questions you have about the uh, organizer app into the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and we'll have time at the end of our presentation today to answer your questions. Uh, last but not least, uh, if you'd like closed captioning, we do have that available to turn that on. There is a live transcription icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You can click that and uh, select your preference. All right, uh, and here is our agenda for the day. This is what we have to look forward to. Uh, first, uh, there is, uh, after, I'm sorry, excuse me, after we get done with this introduction, we spend a little bit of time talking about why we've designed this new uh, separate app for Meetup organizers. Um, once we sort of talk about the differences between this new app, the existing app, and the website itself, then Colin is going to take us through a live demonstration of the Meetup for Organizers app. Um, and last but not least, as I promised, we will have a Q&A session to answer your questions. Um, so um, what we'll talk about today is unique features available in the Meetup for Organizers app, how you can set up that Meetup for Organizers app, um, how to create an event with the app. Um, that'll be part of the live demo that Colin shares with us. We'll make sure to show you how you can activate optional settings in the event scheduler of this app. Uh, and we'll also make sure that you know how to reach out to us on the support team to request additional features or to ask for assistance. Uh, before we move on, uh, we do have a poll we like to share with uh, people who attend these events. We like to learn who's using the app already, if you've already downloaded it. If you haven't downloaded it, we like to learn why. Uh, so you should see that poll popping up on the screen now. Uh, if you'd like to register your answers with it, we'd really love to hear from you. The more feedback we get from people who are using the app, the, the more useful it is for us as we design and continue updating and making it more convenient for our organizers. So I see some people have already started uh, registering their answers with the poll. We really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much. And now I am going to move on yet and... Great, now we're gonna talk about uh, the purpose of the Meetup for Organizers app. We'd like to frame this as, as why organizers deserve their own app. Um, so uh, a lot of times we get a question, which is like, why wouldn't you just wanna continue using the existing organizer app? It has the event scheduler in it. You can often access your organizer tools, a lot of the same functions that you can use on the website or the existing app. So why did we build this new separate app? And the answer is the internet is evolving. The way that people are building communities is evolving. And we wanted to make a dedicated feature that would um, be faster, and simpler, it's more efficient. You get better access on the go to your tools so that if you are managing your event on the ground while you're there, you still have access to everything in real time. Um, we're also able to update and modify this app more efficiently and more quickly because it's a separate um, system. Uh, so the more feedback we get from people who are using the app, the more we're able to iterate and make it, as I said, more convenient for people actually using it. Um, our next slide here is going to show you the difference right now about uh, what you're able to do in each version of the app. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a bullet point list of what you can do in the earlier version of the Meetup app. And as you no doubt are aware, you could create an event, uh, create and edit events. You were able to contact members with your email client through your phone. Uh, you were able to manage your attendees. You could check notifications for your entire Meetup account. You could save a single event draft. And anytime you published an event, it would be automatically announced through the app. As you can see on the right side of the screen, the Meetup Organizer app offers a much more robust set of features. Uh, so the first three are the same. You can still create and edit your events. 
you can still contact your members via email, and you can still manage your attendees. However, the next three, we have expanded functionality through this app. Uh, instead of checking all of your notifications through the app, the Meetup for Organizers app focuses those notifications to ones that are specific to the groups that you organize. So you're getting more specific and more efficient updates about the things that really matter as you're building your communities. Uh, rather than saving a single event draft, you can save a whole list of event drafts so that if you have multiple ideas about events that you want to share with your uh, uh, with your group members, but you're not ready to publish them yet, now you can handle that through the app itself. And we also allow you the ability to select when you are announcing your events. Uh, communications with your members is always a really crucial part of being a group organizer and having the ability to choose when people are told about upcoming events is a huge part of that. Uh, and then the remaining uh, points on this list are features that are entirely exclusive to the Meetup for Organizer app. It's never been available in the previous version of the app. You can create repeating events with the Meetup for Organizer app. You can format your event descriptions. You can uh, add or change event hosts. You can create event fees. So you can charge a ticket uh, for people to attend your event. You can search for events within your group. If you've hosted a lot and you need to find a specific event, we have a search function so that you can identify that. And we have an integrated uh, uh, Zoom connection so that you can just with a single tap of a button, generate a link that will create a Zoom room like the one we're currently in for your online events. So um, we're really proud of what we've built for the Meetup organizers with this app. We look forward to hearing from people who are using it. We just wanted to give everybody like a brief glimpse into what the differences are and what this does for you. So um, it, according to the poll, it seems like a lot of people who have joined us today have already downloaded the app, which is great to hear. Um, I'm gonna spend some time for those of you who haven't downloaded the app, uh, just giving you the opportunity to do so. Uh, I really learn by doing. Uh, so as Colin is going to be taking us through the live demonstration, I would strongly recommend if you don't have your phone with you on this presentation, take a moment now, go and get your phone and scan this QR code that's on the screen now. It's going to take you to a landing page where you're able to download the Meetup for Organizers app for either uh, Android or for iOS, whichever uh, device you are currently using. Um, the screenshots here of the phone will give you a glimpse about what the organizer app is going to look like once you do download it. Uh, and once you have downloaded it onto your device, you log in using the same email address and password that you use to access your organizer account on uh, the desktop or laptop version of the website or on the pre-existing version of the app, the classic app as we're calling it now. All right. Um, if you didn't get a chance to grab your phone or you didn't get a chance to scan this QR code, don't worry. I've got this QR code uh, scattered throughout our presentation today. We'll continue calling it out. You'll get lots of chances to download this and to join us for uh, the navigation part of it. Um, so we're almost ready for the demo. Um, Colin is going to take over in just a moment. Uh, once again, here's that QR code at the top of the screen. Uh, another chance to make sure you download it before Colin takes over and shows us how we're going to navigate through the app, how we create events with the app, and how we can manage events that we've already published. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to hand the screen over to Colin for our live demonstration. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Colin. I work on the product support team here at Meetup. And I'm going to show you um, all about the organizer app. Uh, like Alex said, we're going to go through the, the navigation. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to create events and then also managing them, uh, managing the events along with uh, your attendees. So let me just take over screen sharing real quick. Just give me one second. <clears throat> just going to take this over, start broadcast. Okay. Cool. So hopefully you can see that. Down over here. Great. So I have, you know, my meetup folder here. We have our original meetup app, but I'm going to show you uh, the meetup for organizers app. So when we um, open that, so when you open the app, uh, you'll first need to log in with your organizer account credentials. So keep in mind that this app is not available to members. So in order to access it, you'll need to be on the leadership team of a group in order to access the app. So you can be the primary organizer 
You can be a co-org, event org, assistant org. So um, just make sure to log in with uh, the email address associated with uh, that account. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna log in with my credentials right here. One sec. All right. You can also log in with Apple, Google, or Facebook if you've done that before. Give it a second. All right. So welcome to the Meetup for Organizers app. Uh, this is, you can see that you you will land right on your group overview page. Um, this is my virtual yoga for beginners group. It's a real group that I do. Um, so feel free to find it if you uh, want to do some yoga together uh, online. But yeah, so this is your group overview page. Um, at the top, you can see that you have your group title, uh, the location of your group, and the number of members in your group. Um, and then we have, and, and like when you tap, and actually when you tap your member count, our mobile web experience, you can see I have 284 yogis. When you tap that, it will bring you to our mobile web experience where you can manage your group's membership. So you can change the members role here. You can remove members, you can approve members uh, if you have organizer approval turned on. Um, and you can also tap into the members profile to, to view it. So let's, you know, you can just see, you know, their, their stats and how many times they bars repeat. You can also see um, the answers to their uh, profile questions. Great, so let's go back to the app. So back on your group page, you can also send a group-wide message to your members by tapping contact members and selecting your preferred email provider. So this, um, this message, you can see like, I'm using phone, so I'll tap, you can do Apple Mail or Gmail, but I'll just tap Gmail because um, that's the email address associated with my Meetup account. You wanna make sure that you're selecting the, the correct email address when you're sending a message to your group's mailing list. Because if you don't send the message from the right email address, so the one that's associated with your organizer account, then it won't go through. So you can see that um, you can compose a message and send it to the mailing list. I'll exit here, I'll go back to the app. You can also edit your uh, group settings. So you have the group settings button here. And this also navigates to our mobile web experience. You can edit your basic information, your member settings, et cetera. Cool. And then um, we have our event list right in the middle here. You can see upcoming, you can see any draft events or past events. I'll, I'll talk more about this list in a second. And then at the bottom, we have our hosting tips. So um, these hosting tips link out to our community, community Matters blog. And then we have our group toggle in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm only the organizer of one group, but if you managed multiple groups, you would see the list here. Cool. And then we have our notifications button. So in the upper right, if you tap the notifications bell, we just launched this maybe probably like two weeks ago. And you can see all of these notifications are re relevant to your group. So you can see who's RSVP'd, if there's any new members, uh, any event updates and reminders. So right here, you can see um, Andy RSVP'd to my event earlier today. So when I tap that, it'll bring me right to the attendee manager. And I'll talk more about this in a second. I just wanted to show how these notifications are handy. Cool. And then the last kind of part of the navigation experience is the upper, again, in the upper right, you can tap your profile icon. And this is an overview of your, your profile. And you can um, see you know, your email address, your location. And if you want to connect your Zoom account, you can do that here. And we're always looking for feedback about this app. So you can um, share feedback or feature requests and also report issues or contact us if you have questions. And at the very bottom, you can log out. 
All right. Great. So that was the overview of the navigation of this app. Now, I want to show you a um, really great part of the app, which is creating events. So you're back on the group page here. You can see the, uh, the, plus, the red plus sign in the lower right, bottom right hand corner. And when you tap it, you have the plus, which means create a new event, or the two squares here, that's a, co that's a copy feature. Uh, so, but I'll, I'll uh, show you about the copy feature in a second, but let's just create, an, create a new event. So tap the plus sign. So when you, when, um, when you tap the plus sign, it'll bring you to this event scheduler. Uh, this is where you can input all of your event details. So since this is a yoga group, let's create a yoga event. Um, even though it's a uh, virtual yoga for beginners, let's maybe change it up and we'll do an in-person event, uh, maybe in the park. So let's do some yoga in the park. In the event uh, location, you can choose whether this event will be in-person or online. You can see the online event tab uh, where you can input your own uh, event link or if you want to use zoom you can connect here but for this one let's do in person and since we're in brooklyn i'll say prospect park prospect park and you can see the map here um, but i don't want to do i want to set the the map pin to a very specific point in the park so you can move it around here let's do it right here near the dog park dark beach save that then we also have a how to find us section so you can say anything you want here just this is a helpful way uh, to tell your members where you'll be so let's just meet outside the dog beach great so we'll save that. And then we have our date and time. So tap that to choose whichever day you want. Um, maybe I'll say next Saturday, the 24th. And then let's start maybe at 11 a.m. And we can end at 12 p.m. right around noon. And then we have our event description. So here you can, you can write a, a long detailed description, including uh, the formatting, the rich text formatting. We have bolding, italics, we have uh, bullets and numbering. We can also set a hyperlink on here. So, oops. Great. And then like, if you do the bolding and everything, you can preview it and you can see what it looks like. So save that. And then the last part at the top is the featured photo. So I have a bunch of yoga photos or like just uh, featured photos that I've used in the past. Um, so you can pick any of them or you can even add a featured photo from your camera roll. But I'll just pick this one because this, this one's cute. Great. So those are the important details at the top, but there's also optional settings at the bottom that you can choose to turn on or off. We have a number of these optional settings. The first one is COVID-19 safety measures. So this one allows you to tell your members that masks or the vaccine is required. And you can also say whether the venue type is indoors or outdoors. So here I'll just say that um, the vaccines required and this venue type will be outdoors. You can also share additional details about your personal safety measures if you want. Save. We have a repeat event feature. This feature is actually exclusive to the organizer app. It's not available in the member app. Um, this one allows you to just repeat the event every month, every two weeks, or every week. You can set an end time to when you want to have the event stop repeating. Uh, but for this, I'll just keep this off. I just want it to be a one-time event in the park next, you know, next week. And Colin? Yeah. That when you first open this event scheduler, that repeat event option is not going to be available, right? It's you have to select a date and time first in order to unlock 
the repeat of right. option. And there's a couple of other uh, of these optional settings that are dependent on selecting a date and time first. Yeah. So when you open the app or when you open this event scheduler, you won't see the repeat event or the RSVP start and end time immediately. You'll have to input uh, uh, the time and date first, and then you'll see that option. So if, you, if you're wondering why you don't see that, that's why. Um, but yeah, thanks for calling that out. Cool. And then we have um, our ask a members a question feature. So this just, you can say anything. So let's say, are you a beginner? You know, and when you, when um, members RSVP, they'll be prompted to answer this question. And when they do, you'll be able to see their answer in the attendee list. All right, we also have an add or change host feature. So this is also um, only available in the organizer app. So you can add anyone as co-host as long as they're a member of your group. So let's make Alex um, a co-host for that event. All right. And then we have attendee limit. So this will let you cap the number of members who can RSVP. Uh, but since this is a, you know, it's an outdoor event, I'll just keep this setting off. Let's say off. And then we have the allow guests. So if you want to let your members bring guests, you can do that. So let's just say, you know, five people per member, can, extra guests can come. RSVP start and end time. This is what I was talking about earlier. This won't show up until you um, select the uh, event state and time. But this one, you can set the event to open or close RSVPs at a certain time. So if you want your members to start RSVPing on the day of the event or one day or up to a week before, you can choose and when, when they're allowed to end to. I'll just keep this off though. And the last one is the event fee. This is another exclusive feature to the organizer app, not available in the member app. You can charge your members by setting a payment method to direct from your members or PayPal. If you uh, want to receive money through PayPal, just make sure you set that up on desktop. We're excited to offer this um, in the organizer app, but I, I'll keep this off for now. You can also add a re refund policy. Cool. All right, so I just inputted all of my event details, um, but let's say I'm not quite ready to publish the event. You can save, you can add, input all of this and then save this as a draft by tapping save as draft at the bottom. And when you do that, it will pop right up into your draft list. So that's pretty cool. And you can have a whole list of drafts here. So you can just create a bunch of drafts and then edit them later and then publish them whenever you want. So let's go into this event that I just create that I just, you know, created. And uh, if you can if you um if you want to manage it or edit it, there's a three dots in the upper right. You can just discard it here or you can make edits and then save it. But I'm ready to publish this, so I'll tap publish. And it lets you know that your event's been published. You can let, choose to let your members know now by announcing it now manually here, or you can choose to do it later. So let's just say do it later. And this is the event page where it kind of, it just shows all of what you just created. It's an upcoming event. And at the top, you can see the unannounced button. If you tap that, that's when you can re-announce it. Let your members know, you can announce it now. And if you tap manage event, you can also announce it right at the top there. Great. Um, in the upper right, there is a share button. You can share via text, email. You can copy the link and send it to someone. If you tap more, you can send it within your network to you know whoever you've been recently talking to. Cool. All right, so you just created an event, but you're most likely wanting to manage it or edit it at some point. So let's say you want to view one of your upcoming events to manage. If you tap, if you go to your upcoming uh, events list and you tap see all upcoming events, here you can search for an event in the future. 
So I have a, a bunch coming up here. So let's just say, um, let's go to the one that's happening next Tuesday. You can see that six people are going to the event. Um, and if you tap going, this is uh, what we recently launched the, the attendee manager. You can see who's going. And if anyone has said they're not going, there's the not going tab. It looks like six people are coming, which is awesome. Um, when you tap a member, you can choose to move them to not going. Let's say they told you they can't come. Uh, you can also edit their guest count. You can make them an event host. And if it was a, a paid event or an event with an event fee, you can mark them as paid or unpaid. But this one isn't a paid event, so you won't see that option. Now, sometimes people con might contact you and say, hey, I want to come, or you know, they weren't able to RSVP for whatever reason. So there's a search bar up here where you can add attendees. So let's add one of my members. Let's make have Alex come. My other buddy, Alex, move to going. And you can see the, uh, the going number has updated. So now there's seven people going. You can also see that there are uh, first event kind of tags on the members. So Alex, Andy, Jennifer, they, and Suchi is also coming uh, with a guest. They're all coming uh, for the first time. So it's a good way to just kind of identify them and be prepared for when they come. You can kind of welcome them, <laughs> uh, give them an extra welcome. We also have the filtering and sort option. So you can filter by hosts um, or if they're bringing guests. And then there's a sort option if you want to sort your attendee list by the most recent response or alphabetically. All right. And then we have in the upper right-hand corner, there's the three dots where you can close the event for RSVPs, edit the guest limit and edit the attendee limit. This is kind of, this is uh, managing the, the event like managing those optional settings in the event. All right, almost, we're getting there. So there's, there's this, this app is full of features, so it's, it's cool to show you all these. Um, now, let's go back to the event here. You're back on the event homepage, and if you tap Manage Event, I showed you uh, where if you tap it for an unannounced event, you'll see the Announce button. But since this event was already announced, you won't see it. If you'd like to edit the event, you can. Um, you have all these options, but you can edit the event. You can view the event in the Meetup app. You can feature the event, which it, like pins at the top of your group uh, homepage. You can close the event for RSVPs, copy, cancel, and delete. So a lot, lot of uh, capabilities here. Well, let's say you want to make a, a little edit. Just tap Edit Event. Now this is just a, a warning or just a prompt to let you know that since this event is part of a series, it's a repeat event, but it's, it's telling you that any changes you make will only apply to this one event. It won't apply to every event in the series. So just something to keep in mind. So tap continue. And let's say you expect you'll get to maybe, you know, go 15 minutes later. You can go over here and tap event date and time. <clears throat> tap the end time and you know move it like to 6.45. You can edit anything you want in here, but just a quick way to make edits while you're on the go instead of like logging into your computer or and stuff. That's definitely helped me. Cool, and then tap save and publish and you just make a quick edit. All right, so then, one thing I want to call out that's also super helpful for me is the copy feature, copy event feature. So back on the homepage, remember, um, you know, you can tap the plus sign and, and tap copy. You can select a past event to copy. Or you can go back to your past event list. Tap find, you know, tap see all past events. You can search for it or you could find the event that you want to copy. Eight people came to this. It was a great event. I want to do it again. Just tap manage event, copy event. And it will just ask you to choose the new date and time. 
So let's, you know, make it like for, uh, for the first a spooky yoga event. Cool. So yeah, it's just really quick to make a quick um, copy because, and then it will just uh, du basically duplicate all the information. And there you go. You can choose to announce it now or later, but yeah, so anyway, I, I hope that was helpful. There's a lot of uh, features here in the app and we're always looking for ways to improve it. So um, feel free to contact us uh, and let us know what you think. Let us know if we're missing something or if something's not quite working because we definitely want to make, make it the best app possible for you. So, all right, I'll hand it back over to Alex. Thank you so much for, for your time and um, thanks. All right, thanks, Colin. Um, I'm gonna take over the screen. Great, and we're back, back in the deck. Uh, all right, so um, uh, like Colin and I have been saying throughout this entire presentation, hearing directly from people who are using the app is a crucial part of our process about how we at Meetup are uh, building on this app, what we're developing next, what we're launching next, the updates we roll out. Uh, one of the examples of this in action is a new feature that we're going to roll out soon, which is attendee check-in. This is something for when you are at your event, you can mark uh, attendees as checked in, absent, you can flag no-shows, you can edit guest counts on the fly. We don't have screenshots of this yet because it hasn't launched yet, but we're very excited to share this with you soon. Um, it should be... Um, uh, uh, it's another one of these features that's going to be exclusive to the Meetup for Organizers app uh, designed to make your life as a community builder easier. Um, all right. Uh, one last stop on our tour before we make some time for our question and answer segment, and that is making sure you all know how you can get in touch with us on the community support team. Um, we've got four QR codes on the screen now. These are going to be direct links, and uh, I believe uh, Alex is posting in our chat uh, copies of these links for you as well. Um, and what these are, uh, on the top left, you'll see uh, the product feature request form. So this is the opportunity to request something like the check-in feature. If you are encountering something in the app that you feel is either missing or could be improved upon in order to make things easier for you, that's where we want to hear it. Um, and as Colin also showed you, there's a link in your profile in the organizer app to get to the same form. If you don't have specific requests or questions, you just want to stay up to date on what we're launching and when, uh, you can subscribe to our Community Matters blog or follow this QR code to get a direct link to the page where we post our product updates. If you uh, need help navigating Meetup using the Organizer app or general questions otherwise, our Help Center is full of resources to answer those questions. At the bottom of every Help Center page is a link that says Get Help. Uh, it'll create an email ticket. You'll get in touch with a support specialist who will be able to work with you directly, investigate your account, and uh, provide some answers for you. And last but not least, sometimes something goes wrong, you see an error message, something on the app is not working the way that it should. Uh, we have a direct request to report bugs and get in touch with our troubleshooting team uh, who can uh, investigate thoroughly fixes uh, uh, rolled out as quickly as possible. So the QR code in the bottom right hand corner is the most efficient way to submit those reports. Um, so uh, once again, thank you so much uh, for your questions. I think we have now reached the Q&A portion of the day. I'm going to leave this uh, slide on the screen as we're going through our questions today so that if you haven't had a chance to download the Meetup for Organizers app, you get a chance to do so again. We're going to take a look at the questions we've received. Um, let's see here. All right. Um, the first question I see is, how do we move the meetup arrow on the map? This question comes from Lori. Um, the moving the meetup arrow on the map is, is pretty simple. The arrow itself does not move, but the map does. So you just drag your finger on the map to move the map side to side. The arrow will always stay in the middle of your screen. Um, uh, if that doesn't uh, make sense, we might be able to demonstrate, Colin, if you want to take us for another drive. Sure. Let me just share my screen again. One second. 
<laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, let's go back here. So when I'm here, I go to create a new event. I'll tap the event location. I'll search for the location. So do Prospect Park again. And you can see the map here, but you'll want to tap edit in the, in the right. And then you just kind of drag your finger and it will bring you wherever you want. You can zoom out and zoom in. And once you adjust the map, you tap save in the upper right and it, sh it will uh, move the map pin to wherever you want. I hope that was, I hope that was okay. And um, definitely let us know if for some reason that's not working for you. Um, that's a really useful feature. Yeah. Um, and thanks, Colin. And I, I, I personally find it easier to explain uh, by saying like, it's the map that's moving, never the red cursor. That's always going to stay stationary in the middle. It's as if you have like a, a finger on your table on top of a map and you, someone is moving the map underneath your finger. Um, right. So, um, all right, our next question. Um, I think we may have already addressed actually. This is also from Lori. She asks, how do you track if a certain member has no showed several times? Yeah. Um, like, oh, do you want to answer this, Colin? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, right now in the attendee manager that I showed you, we don't have um, a way to mark someone as a no-show. You can mark them as going, you can mark them as not going. However, our next, uh, the next feature that we're launching within the next week or so, maybe two weeks, um, is a event check-in feature. Now this feature has been asked for, for a long time and we're really excited to, to finally launch it. That's my dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it, the event check-in feature allows you to, I know he's so excited for it. It allows you to uh, mark someone as, of course, going, not going, but also mark them as like a no-show. So it'll, it's kind of like a swipe feature, which I don't, I, I, I don't have a, pr a prototype to show you right, right this second, but it's great because you can kind of like swipe left or right to mark someone as, you know, uh, it's basically taking attendance. Uh, so when you take attendance, you can, you know, say that either they're here or not here or they're, <laughs> they're Suko, excuse me or they uh or they didn't show up so um yeah so that's so right now long story short not possible in the app right now but coming soon and then you then you can be then you can see uh you know how many times that member has uh not showed up <laughs> great uh thanks colin uh, our next question is when an attendee updates their RSVP to not going, does an alert go to the organizer? How would the organizer know this? Um, that's a great question. We just did some work on identifying notifications. We, this is an excellent opportunity to uh, point out. We do have a Meetup 101 this Thursday, uh, specifically about notifications, when you can expect to receive them, how to manage them. Um, as for uh, specifically a member changing their RSVP, I'm actually checking our Help Center article, right? I think I know the answer. And I think the answer is that we don't have a specific notification that is sent when a member says not going. Um, but if you think that that's um, something that's important, we'd love to hear from you. So definitely uh, let us know, because uh, I think that's a great idea. But uh, unless unless I'm mistaking, Alex, I, I don't think we have that specific notification type. Yeah, according to the Help Center article we've got, which um, if you go to our Meetup Help Center and search for notifications, you'll find an article called What Notification Should I Be Receiving? I do not see a specific one listed for organizers to receive when an attendee changes their RSVP. Um, I, I completely agree with Colin. It's a great feature request. Um, and uh, once again, I'll just reiterate, we do have a specific event on Thursday. If you uh, check the Meetup Live uh, group on, on Meetup, uh, you'll see the event for uh, Thursday. It's specific to notifications. I think it's gonna be really useful for organizers to make sure you understand which notifications you're supposed to be receiving, uh, how, to, how to select which ones 
you're going to receive on which devices, that sort of thing. Um, so this is a great question. Uh, I'm going to share a link in the chat of that help center article you're referring to, Alex. Oh, great. I Thank you. I was trying to, to I was trying to multitask. And yeah, I know you're good. <laughs> helpful to kind of see an overview of all the different types of notifications and what to expect. OK. Um, we have a question from Jeff who says he's on the app. He attempted to connect to Zoom account, which uh, was a link that uh, Colin showed us. He said when he clicked on that, he got a note from Zoom to open his Zoom account, which he did. And then he got a message with a red Meetup logo, which is our logo. You cannot authorize Meetup. He's not sure what to do next. Um, one of our support specialists is on the call answering questions live in the Q&A. She says she tested this herself and it worked okay on her end which means it's probably something device specific and therefore like we can't really solve it for you on this call today. It's a great um, opportunity to submit a request to our support team. Uh, use the link that we post in the chat to, to uh, contact a support specialist through the help center. Um, and we'll be able to take a closer look at what version of the app you're using, what device, um, figure out where that connection between Meetup and Zoom is going wrong on your end. Um, another thing you can try uh, before you contact us, if you want to do a little bit more testing on your end first, is to do this on your desktop or laptop computer. Um, sometimes the functionality of the website has different settings to it than it is on your device. Sometimes you can complete certain tasks on the website if you're encountering error messages on your mobile device and vice versa. Um, so uh, if, if you're just trying to make sure that connection gets set up today, uh, that's an option you can try. Otherwise, um, uh, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to investigate. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. I don't see any more questions. Um, yeah. Um, and I think we're about out of time, actually. Um, so I do want to thank everybody for sharing your questions today and for joining us. We're really excited to hear how people are reacting to the new app, uh, to hear from people who are using it. Um, so the more people we can share it with, the better. Um, I'm going to move along in the slide deck here. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now is a QR code to join our organizer community on Discord. This is a great resource that we're developing this year. It's it, it's pretty recent. It's quite new. We have uh, a community of, of working organizers who have successful thriving communities who have offered to become mentors. Um, if you join this Discord community, Discord is an instant messaging platform. You'll communicate in real time with uh, other organizers, and you can get tips, you can get resources, you can get stories about events that they've hosted and what worked for them. Um, hearing from people who are really doing this work, I think, is really crucial. And a lot of the people who work on our support team are organizers as well, but I think it takes on a little bit extra weight if it's people who are just using the app and aren't there to like help support the app specifically. Um, so uh, please, if you'd like to join, please feel free, feel, ooh, feel free to scan this QR code, join our organizer Discord community uh, and see what resources are available to help. It, I, I think it's really great for both new organizers and for experienced organizers who are trying to get a little bit of extra boost in their community. Um, and last but not least, uh, we want to make sure you're aware about uh, the Meetup podcast, Keep Connected. Our CEO, David Siegel, uh, shares uh, what's going on with the company, talks to uh, people who have interesting communities. Uh, you can scan this QR code to subscribe to the podcast. Um, thank you so much for joining us once again, and um, have a wonderful day. Thanks for an, uh, another wonderful Meetup Live. Yes, thanks all for coming. Have a great, have a great night or day.